everyone, this is Ara Durdarian from the HT Guys. And as promised, here's a quick video on the latest speaker that I built. Uh, it's a bookshelf speaker, and uh, it's made out of plywood, cherry veneer plywood. And uh, I'll go into the, uh, the construction of the actual box uh, or the cabinet in a little bit. But uh, what the speaker components actually consist of are the Dayton Audio RS150. It's a six inch uh, woofer. It's their, from the reference line. It goes down to 47 hertz and as high as uh, 4.2 kilohertz. And it runs $40 a piece. And for the um, tweeter, I use a Morel MD29. It's a one and a one eighth inch tweeter. And that goes from 1.8 kilohertz all the way up to 20 kilohertz. And that goes for $52 a piece. And I cross them over with a Dayton Audio uh, two and a half kilohertz crossover. It's a model number XO2W 2.5K. And uh, at 2500 hertz or 2.5 kilohertz crossover, it runs $25.80 a piece. The total cost for all the components uh, was $263. And that also included um, a gold recessed five-way banana speaker terminal, uh, which was uh, like six bucks a piece, and some uh, foam to go inside the speakers. And uh, there was also a speaker, speaker cabinet port tube uh, that went for about four bucks a piece. So all in all, uh, $263 for the entire set. And um, so the construction was made out of plywood. And I'm not an expert woodworker. I, I have, as you can see in the fit and finish, I have a long ways to go. Uh, in fact, uh, I'm probably going to buy myself an actual router because, uh, as you can see here in this first picture, the, um, the router that I was using was simply a Dremel tool with a router bit attached and some, um, uh, like, adapter to help me try and cut circles. Uh, unfortunately, it didn't cut circles small enough that I needed, so I had to freehand some of this. So it was a little rough around the edges, uh, both figuratively and uh, literally. Uh, once all the circles were cut and the um, uh, holes were cut in the back so I could put the uh, binding posts and the uh, venting tube in, it was a matter of putting the, the, you know, the pieces together and uh, gluing it and clamping it and then waiting. Uh, that part was pretty straightforward, but as you could see, the fit and finish wasn't perfect, and uh, we had some gaps, which I ended up filling with wood filler. And then it didn't look that good to me. I mean, it was plywood, obviously, and I knew I was going to have to do something else. So what I ended up doing was going and getting some veneer, some cherry wood veneer. And I just overlaid that uh, on top of the, um, uh, the pieces that were not perfectly smooth. And this type of... Um, veneer is pressure sensitive so you get a roller and you roll it on really hard and then it dries and it ended up looking pretty darn good i was surprised it, it, it obviously filled in a lot of the gaps but the funny thing is you could tell that it's uh, not smooth if you run your hand over it, you, you could feel the areas that weren't perfect but you know um it, it's going to be about how it sounds not how it looks for at least this phase uh, hopefully i'll get better at doing this but anyway, once uh, the veneer was placed on there, it was just a matter of uh, getting some oil. I got some Watkins um, oil. I just rubbed that on there, and it brought out this really nice cherry uh, look. Then once that was done, I went ahead and uh, put on some wipe-on polyurethane, and it started really looking good. Then I put on a wax and, and really shined it up really nice, put the components in, and that was it. It was, uh, it's, and then turned it on, obviously. It sounded fantastic. Uh, I was amazed at, um, you know, the, the low bass that I could get out of it. It was, the, the woofer was rated down to 47, and I put some test tones uh, a lot lower, and it was making noise. You know, how good the noise was, that's all subjective at that low frequency uh, I'm talking. But when listening to regular music after the break in, it sounded fantastic. Um, you know, could you go buy a pair of speakers for $265 that sound just as good? Perhaps. Uh, I'm not going to go out and say these sound like, you know, $500 or $1,000 speakers. But I will say they sound pretty darn good. It was fun doing. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm going to keep going. The next set of speakers I'm going to do will be 
uh, desktop speakers, and I'm going to you know, replace the ones on my desk at the office with these. And um, again, having fun. My recommendation to people is if you want to do something like this, just go out and do it. Have a great time with it. And then um, you know, you'll be surprised at the results. So what I'm going to do here is uh, play some music through it. It's not going to translate, obviously, because the recording device is my iPhone. But uh, at least you'll know that it can produce sound. So uh, it will be quiet here and let uh, some music come through. I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, it's obvious you couldn't hear the quality of the speakers through this demonstration, but uh, again, I played that mostly just so you know that they actually work. Um, now, if you don't want to go into the woodworking portion of it and, and cut all these holes and whatnot, there are speaker cabinets that are pre-made and the fit and finish on those are fantastic. They cost a little bit of money, you know, anywhere from uh, 150 to um, $250 just for the cabinets themselves. Uh, this one for the plywood uh, ended up costing me about uh, $30 and then I bought the um, the veneer. So in all, my cabinets ended up costing me probably about $60 for the pair. Uh, of course, um, again, the fit and finish is not where I would want it to be, um, but we'll get there eventually. All right, you can support the show. Uh, by going to htguys.com, that's our website, and um, we've got uh, a coffee metaphor over on the right-hand side of the website where you can uh, buy us a cup of coffee, and uh, that's just a donation that you make that helps keep the show going. Or another way you could do it is going and doing your Amazon shopping through our link, and that's uh, go to htguys.com slash Amazon. Any purchase you make through Amazon via that link helps the show. We get a little bit of a commission, and it's always uh, appreciated. That's how we can do some of these uh, projects for you. And uh, you can always uh, feedback is welcome, and you can send us email. And uh, the email address is htguys. Sorry, it's htguys at htguys.com. And finally, you can follow us on um, Twitter and Facebook. Just look for HDTV Podcasts on each of those. And we're also on um, Google+. And under that, it's under my own name and Braden's name. So just search for R. Edgar Darian and Braden Russell. So hopefully you enjoyed this. Uh, feedback, as I said, is always welcome. And uh, we'll catch you next time.